The sun was beginning to set, casting an ethereal glow over the streets of Maibashi. I found myself wandering through the quiet town, my heart heavy with uncertainty. The weight of my financial struggles and lack of meaningful connections was too much to bear. I was feeling lost, lonely, and regretting my choices. As I continued my nightly stroll, it started to rain. How fitting. I passed my neighbor, who warned me to go back home, but I didn't listen. Rumors of the Nore Ona, a creature said to prey on unsuspecting souls, filled the air, instilling fear in the hearts of the locals, including him. My neighbor went into more detail, shaking in terror. The wet woman is dangerous. According to the legend, she dwells near bodies of water and has the upper body of a woman and the lower body of a giant snake. She's a malevolent creature with a thirst for human blood and preys on unsuspecting individuals who venture too close to the water's edge at night. Like my wife. I lost her just last month. I found her, lifeless, squeezed to death and drained of blood just next to the lake. My neighbor cried. I felt sorry for him, but my curiosity prevailed over caution, driving me to want to learn more and end this monster. I promised him that I would be okay and hugged him. I really liked his wife. My family was long gone, so I used to visit their restaurant and chat with her as if she were a mother. Late at night, as the streets lay deserted, I approached the tranquil shores of Lake Onuma. The whispers of the legend tugged at my imagination, urging me to seek answers amidst the darkness. It was as if an invisible hand guided my steps. It was there that I saw her, a figure drenched and shivering as if she had emerged from the waters themselves. Her rosy cheeks were stained with tears. She appeared vulnerable. I hesitated, thinking about the Nore Ona, but couldn't simply leave her alone in such a state. With concern etching my voice, I approached the woman cautiously, my jacket already in my hands. Are you all right? I asked, extending the jacket to shield her from the cold night air and prepared to fight if the need arises. She turned to me, her eyes reflecting a mix of gratitude and weariness. Her name was Ayumi, and she explained that she had been caught in a sudden downpour during her spiritual journey. Intrigued by her quest for self-discovery, and her desire to connect with nature, I felt an instant connection. It seemed we were both navigating the uncertain waters of life. Maybe it was fate, but something about Ayumi inspired me to change my life. Days turned into weeks, and Ayumi and I forged a deep friendship. We spent hours together, discussing our dreams, fears, and aspirations. I feel like no one ever sees me for who I truly am deep inside. I confided in Ayumi about my quarter-life crisis, finding solace in her understanding. Ayumi, in turn, shared her spiritual journey, seeking guidance from the natural world around her. One night, Ayumi invited me to join her in a unique bathing ritual at Lake Anuma. Excitement and curiosity mingled within me as I agreed to embark on this adventure. Eager to explore Ayumi's spiritual practices, but I was also cautious. How about the Nore Ona? I asked. Everyone's been saying she transforms into her half-snake, half-human form at night. Those are just rumors. Believe me, I wouldn't put your life at risk. Together we arrived at the lake. 
The moon's soft glow danced upon the water's surface, casting an enchanting spell. Yet, a sense of unease tugged at my heart, causing my steps to falter. A foreboding chill crept up my spine, and I knew this was a bad idea. I'm not sure about this. I admitted, my voice wavering. The idea of plunging into the unknown unsettled me, awakening a fear I couldn't fully articulate. Ayumi's eyes narrowed, her expression shifting from patience to frustration. Asuka, you need to do this, or else. She snapped, her voice laced with a sharp edge. Taken aback by her sudden anger, I stumbled over my words. I... I'm serious. It's just... I have this fear of deep water. I don't think it's safe here. Ayumi's face twisted with disdain, her words spewing forth like venom. Fear? You're letting fear control you? How can you be so incompetent? We're here to connect with the spirits, to embrace our true selves. But you, Asuka? You're holding us back. Her harsh words pierced my heart, the weight of her disappointment crushing me. I had hoped for understanding, for support, but instead, I found myself the target of her anger, amplifying my fear of the unknown. Ayumi's eyes flashed with impatience. You just keep making excuses, like always. She sneered. Go in, now, before I throw you in. Her words wounded me deeply. I had thought our friendship was built on empathy and understanding. But now, it felt like Ayumi had transformed into someone unrecognizable. A monster. The warmth and kindness that had drawn me to her were replaced by bitterness and aggression. Our voices rose, the argument escalating in the moonlit night. Ayumi's face twisted into a snarl, her anger unrestrained. You don't know what's good for you, Asuka, she spat. You're weak, just like everyone else. The venom in her words struck deep, but something within me shifted. In a moment of frustration, I had enough. The truth burst forth from within me. But really, I started spewing venom at Ayumi until she was paralyzed. And once again, I lost control. My eyes glowed with a coldness that sent shivers down her spine. I shed my human guise, revealing my serpent-like form. My upper half was perfectly human, but my lower half was all snake with green scaly skin glistening in the moonlight. The shock and horror that washed over Yumi's face pierced my heart for a second. Why? She whispered her voice trembling with a mix of sorrow and disbelief. I spoke, my voice dripping with cold indifference. I tried to find solace in our connection, but you're rude. I guess my destiny is to remain a monster. With a heavy heart, I lunged forward, ensnaring Ayumi within the lethal embrace of my long tongue and decapitating her head. Then I used my tail to strangle what was left of her. I blacked out. All I remembered were her cries echoing through the night, decrescendoing into silence. The lake bore witness to the tragic end of our friendship. Its once serene surface, stained by the darkness that consumed Ayumi's essence. I sighed. Another one bites the dust. I slithered back into the depths of the lake, now carrying the weight of regret and sorrow. The legend of the Noreona would forever be entwined with my own story, a reminder that even the most innocent connections can be tainted by the darkness within. Ayumi, a victim of my true nature, became a tragic figure in the tale. 
a casualty of the monster I was destined to be 